G'day, I'm Brendan Wang and welcome to Ufish TV. What a beautiful, beautiful day to go fishing. Here we are, have a look at this. This is Port Phillip Bay, it's our first official snapper fish in Port Phillip Bay for the genuine snapper season. And uh, we've just pulled out of Moisen Harbour in the background there. We've got Regan and Dave on board, we just started coming out to the 16 metre mark. And I thought I'd ring me mate Sash and see where the fish were and as we slowed down to talk to him, I went over like the best school of snapper I've seen in a long time. So bang, bang, we just dropped, dropped the pick straight away. We're gonna get a cube trail going and actually have some fun. We need to have a bit of fun because we've just been in the tea tree snapper comp for three days and worked at Guts out in Westerville trying to find a big fish. So as a reward, we thought we'd come to Paul Phillip and just have a have a day of buckles. Well, that's the plan. So let's hope they go. The boys are getting the cube trail going, they've got the baits going. Let's see what happens. Okay, common problem in Port Phillip Bay, we've got a light northerly wind, but the tide's also running to the north. So what's happening is the rods are sitting out like that, but the lines are going back up under the boat. There is a solution. Let's show what it is. Because there's nothing worse than having your rods back under your boat. You want them all laying out the back of your transom. We're going to bridle the boat winger. This is a bridle hook. We'll show you how we use it. This is a special tool that Winger had made up, and it works beautifully, so it's just a hook. You go through the loop, through the loop. Grab these two bits of rope, and then back through the loop. That pulls up tight like that. Move your hand. Let... Okay, so it grabs the rope, yep, it's easy to get undone, yep. We let that out. We made like a Y. Keep going, Regan. What we're doing is we're letting the nose of the boat swing around on the wind, and then we can come back here, mate, grab this, and then we're gonna tie that up at the back of the boat. Okay, and there's the Y. The anchor's out there, and that's up to the bow. And the idea is now, our boat is facing northeast into the wind, our transom, so now the lines will all head out the same way as the transom, which is what we want. Not something I'd recommend to do in rough weather, it's quite dangerous if you wear both side on, obviously, in the big winds. Now, we had that hook specially custom made by Chris Pettigrove down at Sealand Marine in Hastings. So he's at the marina there, him and Carly have got a little store down there. Went in there, they do stainless steel fabrication for micro parts, and he made those for us. So go down and see Chris if you want to get a hook like that. As you can see, we've got the line now pointing straight out from the rod. Everything's in line. This is how you want to sit in Port Phillip. Nothing worse than lines going under the boat. And as you saw, that bridle hook, one of the other good things about it is if in an emergency you need to get it off quickly, get your anchor up. You basically grab this back line here, pull that up, just get the metal shaft and just push it out, and it's out. There's no knots in your anchor rope. That. And never do it and tie it to your anchor rope. And we've got a buckle, boys, we've got a buckle. The burly's working quick, quick, who's got it? Oh, popped it. Oh, well, that's a good sign. So most of the time out here in Port Phillip, when you see this, the rod bends a little bit and starts shaking, and that's not good. That's a flathead normally. What we want to see is the rod start to bend and keep bending. And a really good buckle is when the rod tip goes in the water. And that reel was screaming. Big handful, Dave. Come on. Big handfuls, mate. That's it. Now we start the one-off cubes. Put that pillion for us, Regan. We've got a single 4-0 there. Single 4-0 there. And half inch around the tail. That's just a knot. Like a half inch, okay. Funny, we were just saying that this boat they launched with us, I don't think they have a lot of fishing experience, they're not really set up properly, but they actually follow us out of the harbour and uh, saw us drop, and I've got no problem, they come and drop with us. It's just a bit of fun for everyone, if they can catch fish, that's great, great. But now the burley's going that way, they, just by chance, they happen to stop in their burley trail, and of course, straight away, 
um, they hooked up in the burley. About five seconds later, we've got a big buckle. So the fish they boated look significantly big. <laughs> so we're, we could have some good fish here. We've just got to get them to go. Anyway, what's happening now? We've just gone through a tide change. Now, where the current was going this way into the sun before, now the lines are actually starting to go back towards moorings. And so what we can do is get that bridle rope and actually start lengthening it and lengthening it. And what that'll do is allow the boat ass or the boat. <laughs> that'll allow the boat transom actually to swing around. And we can track and keep the lines behind the boat. I'll show you how we do it. Okay, and what we've done there, we've just let it about two more metres, so the boat just swings around now this way. So we're swinging around. Now right now the lines are going to the left because we just swung, but as the tide now moves this way, the lines will start going that way. That was just the pilchard. And just bent over, didn't scream. Yep. Is that bending? So it's going too. Come on. Oh, didn't go. Get the cubes going now, Griggs. Those fish are going. There's weight in this too. Is there? Hello. It's not little. It's not little, is it? <laughs> that's a good... He's not hooked very well. He's just hooked. Oh, that's a good fish, mate. I know. Look how fat it is. That's a fat fish, isn't it? Yeah. Alright. Yep. Go, Riggs. Beautiful. Oh, well done boys. That nice second hook. First hook fell out in the net, second hook's in. That's why we use the not a bad fish. Nice fish. That's bigger than anything we got in the tea tree. 40 hours of fishing. 20 minutes out here and we've caught that's, that's a good four. I'd say it's four and a half because of the weight of it. Have a look at the thickness yeah. of it. Yeah, it's a fat fish. It's different fishing though. Western port we were the chance of a of a big giant fish. Yeah, yeah this will be the average sort of size. Good fun though. The worst thing you can do is come out here and catch a bag of snapper and let it sit in the sun or in the bottom of your boat. If you're gonna come out here, be responsible, bring an esky, bring ice, put the fish out of its pain, put it in the ice. That way when you get back and you've got a, a bag of snapper that's gonna be fresh and tasty and not fall into pieces like white garbage, which is what happens if you disrespect it. So we've got some fish in this area, we're all alone. We've got a, a huge cluster of boats out there and down to the south. Obviously they're all the fish. We'll, we'll steer clear of them and hopefully get away from the, the mass school fish and try and pull some bigger plums out of the box of cherries. You're not gonna believe this everyone. Size 1000 outfit. I put a big squidgy on it. And while the boys were setting up, I just threw it at the back. It didn't even hit the bottom. Oh. <laughs> Plastic, snapper. Good idea, I found out they do a little iPhone video for me as well. I'll put it up on Facebook to inspire a few people to get out here and get the plastic rod. That's some weight, didn't I tell you? Look, big weight. It's a bit, mate, it's a good fish. It isn't a pinky, it's a snapper. Well, we deserve a bit of fun, boys. I believe it. Size 1000. Squidgy wriggler. Didn't even get to the bottom. None of the other bait rods have taken off. We were still getting, we were still getting them out. And I'm holding this in one hand like this and it, it just screams off. Poor full of bait. We deserve a bit of fun. We worked that hard at tea tree for, for just a bunch of small fish. We thought let's let's give the thick big theory a rest and head out to Port Phillip and get some buckles and we're getting buckles. In style, might I add.
big moment. This is why you fish Port Phillip Bay. We have a huge potential soft plastic fishery out here that hardly is exploited. We're just so, you know, determined to come out and soak baits that maybe one in a thousand anglers does this. And, you know, I can tell it's a good fish. You know, the telltales are, it's cruising, look. It's, it's cruising. Look at this fish, everyone. Look at the size of this fish. Look at the size of this. Look at that fish, everyone. Oh, and we've got a tangle too. So let's get him in the net. It's a nice fish, isn't it? Beautifully done. Look at the damage on his head. Look at the damage on his head. That's your limit for how close you can get, I reckon. It's not a massive fish. But on a plastic, I'm not complaining. He smashed that wriggler. In my opinion, the wriggler, the wriggle tail, or the paddle tail, beats the flick bait in Port Phillip for snapper. All right, let's get him going. He smashed it, that's why. Alright, show them that hook mate. Okay, so it's just a very fine gauge hook. Very fine gauge. You would straighten that on normal snapper gear. But on one, one kilo line, which is what this is, two pound power pro, trout rod, no chance of straightening that under drag pressure. Alright, let's get him going. Reeves, come back this way. Come on. Okay, Squidgy Wriggler has the action built into the lure. I don't have to be aggressive, I don't have to impart much action on this. It doesn't get any easier. Basically, I'll let it sink to the bottom. We know the snapper's standing up ramp, ramp, around behind us. As soon as I hit the deck, just wait for it to hit the bottom. Still taking the line out. In fact, I think the fish has got that. Ready? The fish has got it. The fish has got it. They are loving it. And a buckle in the background here, look, as well. Oh, you make it great. This is a good bite. Don't get these near each other, mate. If you get these, these near each other, the mono will lose. Okay. Um... Okay, you speak do -si -do. Oh, this is incredible. This is our first session together out on Port Phillip Bay, boys. The A team Regan and Dave. The two hard, hard, most hardcore anglers I know that do massive hours on Western Port with me as a team. And today was about fun, just come out and get some buckles. This one's going, three. This one's going as well. Yeah, that's a good fish too. That's a, real, that's a really good fish. This one's still going. So we've got Dave on, we've got one in the holder. Oh, that's a good fish. That's a good fish, that one. I've got the plastics rod here. I'll get this one on the surface. We caught this live on film, this take. It was incredible. He saw it, it was like a, like a tuna sucking down a cube, he was running with it. I put the, the little 1000 in gear 
and hit in the fish and we're hooked up. All right. Oh, here we go. Double colour here, Reeks. Yeah, still cameras. Together, we'll put them in the net together. And there's one at the back there, Reeks. Oh, they're good, good fish. Oh, <laughs> this is crazy. This is crazy. All right, put yours in there. See if we can get more in there too. Go, Dave. Well done. Paul Phillip Bay, plastic and bay fishing side by side. I'm going to this other rod. I'll let you sort that out, Dave. Thank you. <laughs> you know, it wouldn't surprise me to pull a seven or eight kilo fish out of these. They've all got a good average size to them. Oh, it's a big cruiser, this baby. Brilliant work, boys. Brilliant work. Back to self. No. And here's, this is the honest truth. Listen to me, guys. This is a new boat, new electronics. I swear on my heart, there's no GPS marks in that sounder. It's empty. We've come out armed with a sounder and no information. There's Mount Eliza on the eastern seaboard of Port Phillip Bay. We've done the basics of snapper fishing in Melbourne. Sound them, drop on them, burly to them, catch. Another nice fish. This is amazing. That's it. Oh, I watch that way, Dave. How about that fish, boys and girls? Another beauty. Look at this. Another beauty. You know, these are beautiful fish. Um, How you going, Sash? Very good, Mr. Wing. The new boat looks spectacular. Thank you. First time I've seen it in the daylight. And um, I never ever thought I'd be calling you in, mate. It's always the other way around, always. Yeah, you've got to return a favour every now and then, though, Brendan. Thank you for that. No worries, mate. You know, every time I come to Port Phillip Bay, the first thing I do is I ring Sash and say, well, where the, where's the action? Because Sash owns Real Deal Charters and he lives out here. He's a passionate snapper angler. But today, we didn't even get to him. We were heading to where he was, and we just stopped the boat for some reason. I can't even think of what it was. But now, look what happens. The boats have begun. And this is how it is. Someone sees a couple of boats congregating on one area, and they all start raping in towards us. And here's our, here's our good mate, Blackie. <laughs> Now we don't mind people knowing this fish here and coming over with us, but that boat has to do the right oh, thing and not and not sit behind us. That's not right. Beside us, no worries. Head of us, no worries. Not in our cube trail. That's uncool. Don't ever do that to people. Who's that you got with you? Little Hunter. Little Hunter. Hi Hunter, how are you? Give us a wave. Alright mate. Hopefully you get a few more. It is a snapper, mate. Awesome. Really well, mate. I've got my littlest boy on board today, hunt up it. The eldest one, Marlon, is seven. He got a 6.92 kilo in nine metres of water. Off Seaford. A 6.9. Your seven year old. How'd he go in the comp? He came second, mate. Your seven year old came second. In the junior comp. And the thing is. I've watched you fish a lot, a lot with him. He would have been on the rod from go to woe, wouldn't he? Very rarely do I get a rod these days, mate. That looks like he's had a good fish. Probably about a 3.5. No worries, mate. He's into it. Now, if people want to question you, as they did at Tea Tree, I heard, that your seven-year-old caught his own fish. How old's Hunter? Hunter's three. And look at him go. 
So make no mistake about it, the Blackfords, all ages, with their curly tops, are snapper whipping machines. Oh! That's a good fish. Oh, well, well. So the key is, and I agree, mate, just short trips. Get two or three fish and head in. Yes, mate. I think this is a good one. <laughs> Listen to your one, Blackie. Is this out of the way, Regan? You fish TV doesn't do Paul Phillips snapper very often. In fact, I think this is like the second time we've, or third time we've ever done it. But when we do it, we do it well. You know, I hope you're enjoying the show. Information, characters, people just like you. Enjoying the greatest resource in fishing Melbourne has. Pagras Aratus. We're catching ourselves a bag of pags. G'day, Sean. Oh, go hunter! You little bit. That's a horse. Well done. Who's a better fish? That's a horse. It's not a race. You just got to take your time with a fish like this. It pays just to go nice and easy because you don't want to pull the hooks. This is a fish. This is the importance of smooth drags too. Jerky drags cause pulled hooks. Oh! Oh! Ho, ho. Have a look at this! It's a seven! It's a seven! Even bigger! You're kidding me! Oh! Sorry, Blackie, but we've got a big fish on here, brother. It's a big hooah. Oh! <laughs> oh, look at that. Solid fish. Yeah, it's a big fish. Oh. Regan. Give us a big smile, mate, eh? I'm happy. Oh, good on you, mate. Say hello to anyone at home. Tilly. To my daughter, Tilly. And my mum and dad. Hello. There you go. This is what we're doing. All those nights where you don't see me. Look at this. Look at that. Oh, we're going to get it going, mate? Yep.